everyone and welcome to Screams After Midnight. I am Peter and joining me as always is Timothy V. That's great for the audio people, Tim. <laughs> they can sense it. They, they can sense you saluting them, okay. Yeah. Alright, good, good to know. Uh, we talk about horror movies on this, this is a horror movie podcast. Every week we get together and we talk about a horror movie and some horror movie news. Um, we will have horror movie news first and then we'll have uh, our discussion this week which is for a new film called Satanic Panic. Satanic Panic is about a pizza delivery girl who is first day of the job. Um, for some reason I thought this movie was going to be set in the 80s and the first scene is like mm. her watching something on her phone so I'm like okay it's just, it's just present <laughs> fair enough um, so yeah uh, main girl whose name is Sam Sam oh how could I forget <laughs> one of the many Sams uh, so she's named Sam and it's her first day and she's she's struggling for money and she's getting lumped with all the all the bad jobs uh, all the delivery jobs with the don't tip so she's really <laughs> struggling she needs tips to survive and she takes this 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 call that's just a little bit out of the out of the radius that they're supposed to deliver to but she's like I'll do it and she goes to this big rich mansion and she gets stiffed on the tip again she tries to kind of like blag her way inside to get a tip <laughs> and ends up encountering a bunch of Satanists, a uh, cult, um, who are pissed because they don't have their virgin for the sacrifice, but then realise that she's one and uh, try to nab her instead. So the movie's about her kind of running from this cult, um, led by Rebecca uh, Rome. Romagin, Roman, uh, have you? Romain. Romain, is it Romain? There you go. Yeah. Uh, Mystique from the uh, the first three X Men movies mm -hmm. as the leader of the cult. Jerry O'Connell's got a small part in there as well, as does the roommate. From Jerry Happy. O, let's go. <laughs> as does uh, the roommate from Happy Death Day. Uh, thank yeah. you for that, Tim. Why did you quiet all of a sudden? What, what, what's supposed to be the weird silence? Oh, I thought you were still talking. <laughs> no, I have finished. That's the premise. Oh, okay. That's the premise of the film. She's running around for a cult who wants to sacrifice her to some demon at midnight. So there could very well be screams uh, right on midnight. <laughs> it sounds like she has to go on a midnight delivery. <laughs> of a baby. Of a demon baby. Uh, that's the premise. Tim, I'm going to ask you yeah. the question. Did you enjoy Satanic Panic? Uh, I did. Uh, I liked it uh, quite a bit. Um, I, I I do think it is more... Uh, it, it's definitely, you know, a very... Uh, um, like, it, it's comedy horror for sure. Uh, but I think, it, you know, it's definitely verging more on... You know the the jokes and the laughs and stuff you know versus the, the horror but i do think there were some cool like you know horror bits in here um the it does seem like pretty like low budget so you know i, th I think maybe there's some stuff that you know uh could have been done better uh potentially but like i i like like the characters uh enough and um yeah you know, i thought the you know uh not every joke landed but I, I think more you know did than didn't uh so i was like a you know pretty actually i, I was gonna say pleasantly surprised but actually i was kind of um had high hopes for this movie because i actually really like the uh the guy that wrote it and the director only i've only seen one other thing that uh, she did but i liked it too so uh no i was uh, pretty happy with this one okay okay um I thought it was okay. I, I didn't love it. Um, I think I was kind of into the vibe of it for a, a while, and it kind of lost me a little bit as it went on. And I think, and I think actually, and I hate to say this, I really hate to say it this way because I, <laughs> I, I, I don't like ragged films for this, but I, I do think the budget actually hurt it more than I would have liked. And yeah, and I think what sucks about that is that I think obviously some talented filmmakers can really do a lot with no nothing. They can the, the restrictions just make them get more inventive, and I think mm. this movie uh, falls into a category of directed video movies for me from recent years where um, it's got a fine idea. Um, mm -hmm. I think this one's elevated a little bit by a decent cast. I think uh, the girl who plays mm -hmm. Sam is pretty likable and handles yeah. the movie quite well. And then you've got some other, some other kind of not stars, but others to kind of like back her up who flesh out the movie a little bit and the mm. stars feel pretty solid it doesn't feel like you're, you've got like a low caliber of actor in this which is nice yeah but it looks like a TV show yeah it does yeah. it looks like a TV show the whole time and 
that would be okay uh, if if the if the action itself if the, the plot itself was kind of always doing stuff to keep me excited and interested and whatever uh, i do mm. think though about halfway through the movie though it kind of really i don't want to say slows down but there's a point where the characters are just kind of sitting in the house discussing what they should do mm-hmm. and that part of the movie feels like it lasts like a good big chunk in the middle so the pacing yeah. for me kind of started to really wane uh, by that point and a couple of the horror moments i, I felt the budget kind of effect there's, there's a scene with a bed sheet uh, i'll just say <laughs> where I yeah. f- it felt so simple and on a, mm-hmm. an, an effective because it was just kind of silly and not as like over the top mm. as it feel like it should have been you know it should have been like an evil dead scene almost it should have been like wacky and like you know ridiculous yeah. and it, it didn't really ever get to that that level it just kind of felt like it was okay mm. all right that's what that's what you could do you could do um mm-hmm. so I, I think it's held back by a few things i think the it, 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 it didn't feel like it got ri- as ridiculous as it should have like, there's a couple of things that sure. are kind of ridiculous but I never quite got there. And the one th- the thing that's the, probably the most ridiculous in the movie is something that I saw be more ridiculous recently in another film. Um, if you've ever seen Tetsuo the Iron Man, I'll be bringing that up when I talk about that certain scene spoilers. So, it's not bad. It's not a bad movie by any means. It's kind yeah. of uh, middle of the road, um, but ultimately I felt kind of uninspired by the end of it. I was kind of like, okay, that existed. It was fine. Yeah. Good cast. Yeah, uh, I, I think I'm more positive than you, but I wouldn't necessarily like disagree. Um, like I, like I definitely did like it, uh, but yeah, there were some faults, and um, yeah, I think the big one, like you said, is just it, it doesn't look great. Like it doesn't look bad, but like you said, there is a very obvious like you know quality difference versus you know like other movies uh, you know that you watch. Uh, and uh, yeah, and I, I agree with you. <laughs> like, I do feel bad uh, complaining about it, but uh, yeah, it is something that is kind of noticeable in, in this. But yeah, I felt guilty. Uh, like, I, like two thirds out of the movie, when I realized it was kind of bugging me, I felt guilty for caring about it. But I was like, eh. yeah. like you know, it feels if it looks like a TV show the whole time, it really does. And not that there's anything wrong with a TV show, but like TV has a lot of other benefits that movies don't have to kind of make up for it. Mm. Because uh, they yeah. get to do this long forms thing where you really care about the characters and so on and so on. A movie like this doesn't have that. A movie like this has 90 minutes to tell its whole story and be fun and be engaging. And it is fun and engaging at certain points. It is, but... It... Yeah, and I, I kind of like uh, I kind of kept thinking about how um so it, it, it's written by uh, this guy Grady Hendrix who's a you know a horror author and I really really like his books and like a lot of the dialogue felt like the you know kind of like the snappy mm. uh, you know like witty uh, you know stuff that he he would write and but I, I couldn't help but think like yeah some of this stuff might work a little better in a book than in a a movie like you know like sometimes when people like say stuff like it's like too fast and too clever (laughs) that it doesn't necessarily like feel like uh authentic um there's like some stuff here and there uh which i don't maybe kind of might feel like a a weird thing to say but i mean um, i'm a josh whedon fan so i don't mind snapping way dialogue (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I mean, maybe sometimes it might depend on, like, the person that's delivering it or, yeah. or something. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know. I feel bad. I feel like I'm probably being too negative because I still had, like, a lot of fun with it. And, you know, uh, I, th- I thought it went by, like, uh, pretty quick. Like, maybe there's, like, a little bit of a, a lull in the middle, like you're talking about, like, when they're kind of in, in the house. Like, that probably could have been sped up a little bit. But, I mean, otherwise, you know, um, there definitely wasn't anywhere any point during the movie that I was bored or anything, and and I really do like the the main character. I thought she did, yeah, like a good job of uh, you know moving the story along. And um, I mean, maybe she, uh, might have been some instances where maybe <laughs> she could have been like uh, a little more proactive, or maybe people could have stopped for a second to <laughs> try to <laughs> gauge what's going on a little bit better. Um, but it, it's still a lot of fun, I think. Yeah, I think she's the best thing about the movie. Uh, the cast in general are the best thing about the movie. I, I think they really carry it. And it's kind of a, a testament. Because it's with a lot of horror movies, like sometimes the acting doesn't even doesn't even need to be that great necessarily. Where I'll get into it because it's goofy, or I'll get into it because the filmmaker sure. is just that good. But the filmmaker here is not <laughs> anything notable or special. It's not really doing anything. Like I say, it looks like a TV show. And which I think is more of a problem now than it ever has been because TV shows are starting to look really good. Some of them, like not all of them, like but like you know, if you're watching like Mindhunter on Netflix or you're watching 
Um, I don't know, there's a lot of good looking TV shows now that are looking more cinematic than movies do. And it kind of sticks out. And I, I think um, it's just one of these things where like, even movies in the 80s that like, did kind of have this like low budget feel to them, they still, like because of the way movies were made, they still ended up looking more like movies than TV shows. They just did. Um, yeah. Whereas now a lot of these direct to VOD stuff, because they're made the same way that TV shows are made in. They, they just they end up having this kind of feel to them it really takes a director to sort of go out their way to give it like a, and a cinematographer to go out their way to give it a, a unique look and feel but um it's not bad though. i don't want to sound too harsh on it because i think it's a fine time i think it's an easy 80 minute watch that you'll probably get some chuckles out of um but it's not one that i'm going to find that memorable it's not one that i'm going to be like ah oh, top 10 of the year at the end of the year where i'm like yeah this, sure. this has to be on there kind of thing yeah yeah i think uh essentially i, I did end up liking it uh i was I, I, again from the people that were involved who i like a lot i was kind of hoping to love it and i can't really go that far unfortunately but um still not bad though like i like you know i'm glad that i didn't hate it for sure yeah well i mean that's always always good uh so yeah i uh yeah, I guess we'll go spoilers then. Uh, we'll go into spoilers. But before before I st- start that section, I, I will tell you about patreon.com slash TV where you can support us. Uh, you can support us financially for as little as $1 per month. And as part of that $1, you get an exclusive bonus episode every month from us on uh, Screams After Midnight. Although next month on the October thon, you get four. You get four total bonus episodes. So uh, that's a special thing for October. Uh, so please do. Uh, go over there and have a look. You also get bonus episodes for other shows that we do on Mailfuzz TV, uh, such as the Sci-Fi Movie Podcast, The Ace, and some other stuff. Then uh, you get a vote stuff at the five dollar tier, and then there's higher tiers. So go have a look, see if you're interested in any of that, and want to keep this, the show coming and support all the content we do. Uh, but yeah, so full spoilers for Satanic Panic uh, from henceforth. So um, I was a little bit worried actually about the opening scene because the opening scene is this POV shot where it's uh, you know you know later on it's. Uh, uh, Romaine's character, uh, Danica, who's the leader of the cult. Uh, she comes home to her big fancy house and she hears, like, sex noises. And she goes up and the movie tries to play it like, oh, maybe someone's being hurt. And every time a movie tries to do this, it's always like, no, I know they're having sex. It's, like, really obvious. Yeah. <laughs> um, it would actually be more of a shocky twist if they were actually being hurt. Like, I'd actually be like, oh, it's just, it actually is being, yeah. like, you know, tortured or whatever. Uh, but she catches her daughter having sex, who is the, the roommate from uh, Happy Death Day, uh, Ruby Modine, uh, played in this character, and uh, her name is Judy, and she gets really angry at her, and I was really, really worried, actually, after this scene, because, like, still in POV, she goes up, and she kind of, like, hits her daughter's head off the wall, hits Judy's head off the wall, and it looked really, like, fake, like, really, like, mm-hmm. s- like soft, and, like, she didn't really bash her daughter's head in the wall. That was like really <laughs> shit looking. And then yeah. you know she was after the guy who was having sex with her, and it's just kind of this like sort of stream at the camera as it goes into like, the, the title screen or whatever. And I was like, oh, that felt really neutered. That felt like really like it wasn't really tried very hard. I was really worried about that, uh, you know, from that point. And I don't think it, it lived up to my fears from that opening scene. But it felt sure, it really yeah. it it really stuck out to me during that opening scene. <laughs> That's funny. I completely like forgot about that opening scene. <laughs> I was like, until you started bringing it up, I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> I forgot that happened. Because hmm. then we get interested to Sam, we get interested to the, the pizza place, yeah. and uh, we get a little montage of her delivering our pizzas to, uh, you know, old lady who gives her a cardigan for a tip, and a yeah. guy who makes her, makes her move a couch with him, and then just tips her with a, a coupon that's out of date. Yeah. And so that's important. The uh, yeah, she's at this fraternity, and uh, so her name's Sam. And then you know the guy asks her like, "Oh, what's your name?" Uh, she's like, "Sam." He's like, "Oh, my Sam's too." And so he's like, "Oh, you gotta help me move this couch because uh, it's the uh, the rule of the Sams or whatever, where basically when uh, someone named Sam <laughs> needs a helping hand, uh, you know, you have to help them, uh, which uh, just comes into play later. But uh. Yes, yep. very, very neatly set up, yes. Uh, <laughs> but she ends up taking this job uh, to go to the, the big mansion, and because she was told this story by the other piece of, piece of guy that he once went out here and had to kind of like, like they get stuff to the tip, but there was like an orgy going on, so he passed around the hat for a tip and made quite a lot of money. Um, so she kind of like fights her way back in, actually sneaks into the house, illegally breaks into the house, might we add. Yeah. 
but what you get to the people basically they're not paying attention to her they're just like listening to uh uh darica like spout or you know oh tonight we'll you know praise satan and yada 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 yeah and uh, I, I just want to mention here i've you know worked in you know the customer service industry uh you know for <laughs> many many a year uh and i do find that uh rich people often are the cheapest which is really infuriating <laughs> like uh when you see someone that like a, a rich person that like yeah doesn't tip or they'll give like you know a couple of bucks on like you know a hundred dollar meal or something when you know they know they can easily 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 afford you know much more that does uh infuriate me good to know Tim. just saying good to know <laughs> so uh we have uh, that scene was kind of funny to me because she like they're not really paying attention to her but she like she doesn't really react either because i thought because they, they, she's she's this speech is going on for a while and it ends with saying and you know praise satan you know up until that point she has no idea what they're talking about and there's not much of a reaction to it i really thought that like, when she said oh and praise satan at the end it was going to be a spot where she was like wait what did she just say what's happening yeah. <laughs> what's going on um but they start questioning her uh and when they ask if she's a virgin she just kind of like goes uh, that's very personal she's a virgin get her like that's kind of yeah. the, the moment uh and then she wakes yeah. up after being passed out for a while uh, with Jerry O'Connell, who's this is his one and only scene in the movie. He's got one scene um, where he tries to save her life by having sex with her. Uh, yeah. He, he licks her in the face and says, "I'm trying to save your life. Let me be a hero." And licks her in the face. It's <laughs> you know disturbing in a silly kind of way. Yeah, it's uh, like obviously you know in the you know uh you know there's a context that it's uh you know that's very uh you know gross and creepy but uh you know i, I think it, you know it works here is because he's kind of like a you know an over-the-top character and you know she does get like the best of him like you know she kind of like face palms him and, and you know he starts bleeding and and stuff so it's uh yeah i, I thought it was pretty funny and then obviously he gets uh you know he's a piece of shit and then you know ends up getting <laughs> what's coming to him uh but uh yeah i thought that was a uh, an, an, the one thing i i, I that was maybe like a little weird here though is that uh, his name is also sam mm -hmm. um which uh, i feel like uh okay so you know you had the whole thing in the beginning with the code of the sams and uh, so i thought it was going to come into play here or she was going to try to use that um which she doesn't and then i feel like it's you know obviously she ends up using it later in the film well uh, she which... actually does briefly try to use it what does she say i don't know she actually says uh, Rilla Sams and he's just kind of confused and she just kind of moves on. She just says, oh, I guess that didn't work. <laughs> uh, I, I don't really re uh, remember her mentioning it uh, yeah. at this point, but I, I, I I think it feels like a... I, I think it's meant to be the rule of threes. You hear it first time and then this is the second time you hear it briefly and then the third yeah. time is where it actually comes out of play. Uh, I, I guess. Uh, it just I don't know, kind of felt like unnecessary. Uh, or maybe I was expecting too much of it uh, for this year, but uh, otherwise, though, you know, it's uh, Jerry O'Connell uh, in his underwear, which, hey, that's a uh, you know, it's never a bad thing. <laughs> or it's always a bad thing. I don't, I don't... <laughs> but he ends up shooting himself in the neck because he tries to shoot her when she's... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which is trying I, to use I thought phone. that was actually pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, and he gets really mad at her. And he tries to shoot her, and it doesn't. It doesn't go off. So he, he kind of turns it around to look at something, and he tries to pull the trigger while he's pointing at himself like an idiot, and shoots himself in the neck. Um, which leads to what well, after she runs off and the, the cult come in, uh, Danica like puts her hand in his bullet wound and gets all the way in, uh, like she's fisting him, and then yeah. eventually pulls out his heart, which is glowing. And that gets cooked and turns into like a little beast. So the one thing I wasn't sure about this though uh, is why why was he so intent on stopping their sacrifice? Because he like like at first you think he maybe is just being a creep and just wants to have sex with this girl, but then once he's like willing to kill her, uh, it's like. You know, like obviously you sense that there's some, uh, you know, friction between him and, uh, you know, the, his wife and stuff. But uh, again, though, I wasn't really necessarily sure why he was like so, uh, you know, for upsetting the sacrifice. I guess he's just against it. Like, I mean, it doesn't really go into <laughs> it in any great depth. It's just kind of like, you know, we only get one scene with him. So it it's just weird because it doesn't seem like he's 
you know, he doesn't seem like an altruistic guy. Like it doesn't yeah. seem like he's doing it for, you know, good reasons. Uh, so I don't know. Yeah. But he, uh, he, yeah, he's just himself. Uh, the, the thing that's like made from his heart, like there's a weird scene later on where like Danik is like pouring her blood at it from her finger and then like it starts sucking her finger. This little anus that's coming out of it. Um, <laughs> it's a very erotic scene in the weirdest way possible. <laughs> Sure. Where's it possible? <laughs> um, so yeah, so Sam runs out and she gets to uh, this other house, this other big house on the street, and this babysitter lets her in, and it's like, oh my god, what happened? She's like, oh, you going for the police? And she's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. How about I'll, I'll go get you a drink, uh, and she gives her like some coke, and she puts it down, and they focus so much in this glass of coke that I knew there was something wrong with it, like it was going to be a plot point. Uh, uh, and you know there's two little boys there and one's like oh I can see your boobs because her shirt's been kind of ripped and it's like okay sure <laughs> um, but the little boy drinks the coke instead and collapses and passes out uh, and this lets her know that something dangerous is happening and she runs upstairs and she ends up encountering uh, Danica's daughter uh, Judy who's tied up <laughs> and was supposed to be killed here <laughs> supposed to be killed and she lets her go yes <laughs> But this is where we get the the, the big drill yeah. dick, uh, yeah, or the drill do as yeah. as yeah, Judy like calls kill-do, it, I, or yeah, kill do. Like, sorry, yes, the kill do. Yeah. Um, so this is a big sort of metal kind of drill piece sort of thing yeah. that's been worn like a strap on that um, they're planning to kill the, uh, the Judy with. Um, but of course, Sam just kind of looks out when she's trying to dodge them and she, she ends up, like, because there's two sisters here, she ends up killing her own sister and then she, when she runs to go and get going, uh, she's still got her sister on the drill bit, but when she runs to go <laughs> and kill Sam, Sam is out the way and the drill goes into the wall, hits some electrical wiring and electrocutes her. So they're both like sort of like on the wall, dead, uh, yeah. skewered on this drill bit. Which sounds like hilarious, and it kind of is to a point. But I will say this: this is an odd complaint again. This just goes back to it feeling a little cheap. Is the drill bit felt too clean to me? It felt too like shiny and like or not even shiny, just like yeah, it's uh yeah. In concept, this is like this sounds really cool and funny. Uh, but I feel like yeah, probably because of the budget they were working with, they couldn't do too much with it. So you don't even see it that often. Yeah. Uh, like you know you kind of get like you know the one big shot of it and then you know the rest i, I feel like is usually you know you'll see maybe like little like close-ups of it and, and you know here and there or whatever or um like a you know kind of a you know shot of it through the you know the other girls like chest and you just kind of see the little tip coming out um so yeah like i, I think it's this kind of stuff here that like when you're watching the movie it's a it's a shame because it's like oh like this uh, is really you know, this is like could be a cool funny idea but it seems like you know they're just like a little limited with like how much they could actually do with it yeah um it's it just you, you feel the, the 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 budget and this is where i was going to compare it to uh tetsuo the iron man which is okay. a, an insane japanese movie from like 1989 mm-hmm. uh which actually has a, a drill sort of penis thing kind of like this um, and it is the most ridiculous, like gritty looking thing, and it feels, you know, and I, well, for for a start, it feels like it functions, and it feels like it's really dangerous and like you know greasy and like, it, like everything about it just has a feeling and tone to it. Whereas this looks like a prop from like a Power Rangers thing, and I know that's insane yeah. to say because it's like a, a drill <laughs> dildo, but like it just it looks kind of cheap and fake. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm saying. It, it didn't really feel like there was like much like you know weight to it. Like yeah, it, you know, felt like it was you know probably like plasticky uh, versus you know it should be like you know this big metal you know thing. Uh, but yeah, I I tried watching a uh, Tetsuo the Iron Man because it's on Shutter. Yeah. <laughs> I think I tried watching it before and it's just like something about the aesthetic of the movie just like kind of makes me like sick. <laughs> like, oh, it's. it's that's a great little movie. We did it on the Ace, uh, so yeah. um, I can recommend Tetsuo the Iron Man if you want it because yeah. it is kind of like borderline horror. It's kind of like it's a it's a cyberpunk horror. That's how I would describe yeah. it. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I, w- I want to watch. I heard good things, but it's just like I don't know something. When I try to watch it, it's just uh, like the look of it just <laughs> like upsets me. <laughs> you, you would get into some of it though. There's some stuff that happens later on, much <laughs> like the drill piece that you yeah. would you would get into. It's- 
It does sound like something I'd like. <laughs> it, it does, doesn't it? Uh, so, of course, even though Judy's very sort of uh, hostile, we'll say, because she's the enemy of her enemies, they, she kind of teams up with uh, with Sam. And this is where, for me, the movie... Because I felt they were going to be running around trying different houses or being more proactive. And it feels like they're just yeah. kind of in this house together, kind of waiting for things to happen for a long time in terms of the... The, the movie like it like they you know obviously the bed sheet thing happens where the bed sheet kind of rolls up and tries to attack sam and there is the scene where the other like the, the sort of second in command uh, for the cult tries to take over and tries to do some voodoo stuff and they're trying to paint her body like in these symbols to protect her during that like but it just kind of feels like they're waiting for things to happen there's, there's, there's no yeah. there really needs to be a point here where it felt like no we're going to be proactive and they kind of do right, right at the very end of this chunk we're like okay let's come up with a plan and see if we can do if we can do something but it's all it's like a little too little too late it feels like there's a lot of time but they're just kind of waiting and for me this is where the movie kind of lost me a little bit and i was you know just kind of like zoning out of it and because it was wasn't keeping my attention yeah and uh i don't, I don't know uh judy she's kind of a weird character like uh I, I would say overall i did like her uh but i found it like to be a little frustrating at first because she's just one of those characters where like you know they need to have a scene like you know if this was real life uh, there should be some where they would you know just kind of stop everything sit down and have like a five minute explanation of what's going on but there's just so much stuff where she's just like you know hurriedly like running along and doing stuff and then sam would you know kind of be like oh like what are you doing like we should do this and she'd be like oh, stupid don't you know anything but it's like obviously you're talking about like these weird like occult magics and spells and stuff so like she's just gonna have no idea what's going on uh, and it, like i got frustrated for the character when you know it feels like like she's so lost and then like you know judy would seem like you know she's upset that she wouldn't know like what's going on or and it, it's a shame because do. it feels like you've got this character now who's on the, the hero side who knows about all this witchcraft stuff yeah that maybe okay this is how we're going to be proactive and fight back but it never really kind of because you know I, I got kind of excited at first because when she first gets up and she's like she's gotten dressed because when she first finds her she's like naked and tied to the bed kind of like gagged yes. and all that um she she starts like pouring salt around like the windows and doors and it's like oh no no this will keep the demons out and stuff and i thought oh maybe i mean i, I don't necessarily mind that it's going to stay in the house again i like a bottle movie i'm okay with that but like it's when it feels like it's just sort of wasting time and i thought that you know okay well, okay there's going to be attacks and they're going to have to fend them off and there's going to you know yeah. be all this stuff um and we're going to have judy there to kind of like know what to do but it never really felt like it did much of that they, 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 they literally just sink and drink booze for a while at one point yeah um, and obviously, yeah, we find out a lot about Sam when she's helping, like, draw the symbols on because she's trying to, like, calm her down by telling her about her past. And we find out her one real boyfriend she's ever had was someone she met at chemotherapy because she she had leukemia. And she went into remission and survived, and he didn't. And she, she never went back and visited him after she got out, and she feels guilty about that. And this is, like, sort of, like, getting into her past and, like, what's driving her as a character. And, like... A fine backstory this is this is all fine stuff yeah. um but it does feel like a bit of an exposition dump at this point in the movie um yeah i, I did like this stuff like yeah i did i guess it is like a little out of place but uh you know i, I did like what the you know backstory ended up being and, and it kind of explains like some stuff like we had earlier like you know at the beginning of the movie she was playing this video of her singing like this song about australia and uh mm -hmm. You know, she has this, uh, when she gets stressed out, she has this, like, thing she does where she kind of, you know, closes her eyes and just keeps repeating, like, two fuzzy bunnies, uh, which, um, yeah, you find out, like, you know, the backstory of that, and then, you know, that <laughs> comes into play later. Because um, the movie could, because I think the movie's supposed to be about her kind of, like, coming out of her shell and actually be willing to fight for herself and, like, you know, not, yeah. not be scared. And that that is a fine plot to have and it's a fine premise for the character's arc to be i just i feel like it, it really had to kind of like do more with it and like you know maybe introduce the idea that she she used to be sick uh earlier on in the film you know leave the boyfriend reveal sure for this point in the movie because it's, it's a big dramatic beat but um it just, just i don't know it, it almost feels like they had to give her a backstory so they give her one rather than it's it's the driving force of the movie if that makes sense yeah. because it should be the driving force of the movie it should be the the thing that gives her the growth throughout the film and as it is it just kind of feels like it's almost just tacked on because our oh, main character should have some backstory stuff yeah yeah no no that's fair um yeah uh, i don't know 
yeah, with a <laughs> better w way to do it would have been. But yeah, I feel like maybe could have been a little more organic or have it sprinkled a little bit throughout <laughs> instead of just yeah you know, all of a sudden throwing it on here. Yeah, and then uh, so what else is going on? There's a lot of infighting in the cult. That the you know the the, the second in command Gypsy doesn't like Danica, and actually. Uh, a third one kills Danica uh, by driving a spike through her head, which is oh, that's interesting. Killing off your kind of big star uh, yeah. <laughs> at this point, you're two thirds of the movie. But she actually wakes up like after they all leave and go to do other <laughs> stuff. She wakes up, I guess, because she's made a deal with the devil. <laughs> yeah, I assumed it was yeah some yeah. type of magic or demon thing. I don't know if we ever um do you ever actually find out exactly what their like the cult's deal is? Like I I, I assume it's just basically they just want to be rich and powerful pretty much so that's why yeah they sacrifice and do these magics but i don't know if there was more to that or if that's re really just <laughs> basically all there is i think that's all we ever really get is is that yeah. but yes i don't know but uh yeah so so yeah ultimately come midnight they know they're going to be coming after them mm. and they lure them in the plan to be uh, to, to to you know to to get out during this, um, but ultimately, of course, it doesn't work, and they get captured, and they wake up um, because because they're running away. It's actually Danica who kind of runs into them uh, as they try to run away uh, in the the forest, and this is where they, they they get captured, and they wake up on the table. They're they're ready to be sacrificed and whatever. You know, the birth's going to happen. We see. Uh, Sam's belly get bigger because they've dressed them in these robes and sort of dolled them up a little bit and everyone's around a lot of the cult people start getting naked it's you know typical stuff <laughs> and it turns out so there's this little girl that we've seen a few times in the film at the start of the movie we see her on the on the, the sidewalk kind of like you know doing our Freddy Krueger dance <laughs> um, and we, we see her a couple of times throughout the film you know, I think when Sam first drives to the mansion we see her on the street um, and it turns out that this 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 little girl is some easel, the the demon that, that, that has been born, and every everyone disappears and Sam looks normal again. Uh, and worth mentioning that during this, uh, Judy got her throat slit by her mother, so she's dead now. Uh, just I'll casually just add that on, but <laughs> she uh, basically this demon's like, oh, I'm going to kill them all, and you know I like you though, Sam, so I'm going I'll kill you quick. And this is where Sam uses the son of Sam, oh, not the son of Sam, sorry, the, the, the <laughs> rule of Sams to, yeah. to like get, it's like, hey, I'm Sam and you're Sam, and you don't like breaking the rules, do you? And she's like, oh, fine, you can go. So mm. she, she, she leaves. And then we sort of see that all the people are still there, you know, because they, they were gone for a, a bit during this scene where the, the entire, like, yard is empty. But then they all come back, and we see that they're all actually there and still having sex, but now they're dying and they're getting killed and, <laughs> and whatever. Yeah. The demon's just killing them all. So, I bet they're glad they raised this demon. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, like, in the in the whole thing is, uh, well, <laughs> it wasn't the demon <laughs> that they were trying to raise. As a, yeah, when they kill one of the people, there's, like, a, a salt, uh, like, outline or whatever, and their hand kind of scrapes some of it off. Yeah, 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 because, so. uh, yeah, Danica kills Gypsy for her betrayal, essentially. Yeah. And as she dies, she, her hand kind of scrapes the, the circle of salt. So instead of the demon they wanted, because I think the demon they wanted was, like, uh, Bethesda or something like that, or... Yeah, it was, like, basically, like, yeah. the, I think they were saying, like, the demon of, like, wealth and or yeah. something like that. Uh, and then, yeah, so he was supposed to come, but then I guess with that barrier broken or whatever, uh, Sam Ziesel or whatever ends up coming. And then, yeah, like you said, um, you know, she was talking about how there's rules and like, you know, there's certain like, you know, levels of demons and like you, you can't like, you know, summon that guy first. So, you know, she's all pissed and stuff, but, uh, but then that's cool. Cause then, yeah, it sets up like, oh, okay. So she, she's a rule follower, uh, so then, yeah, that helps with the, you know, uh, rule of the Sams. Um, but I, I thought this stuff uh, was all pretty good. Like, again, um, you know, you see the demon kind of walking around, and, like, uh, I, I thought he looked pretty cool. Uh, again, obviously, I'm assuming probably budget stuff. They probably couldn't do too much with him because you don't really see, like, a ton. Uh, but the little, like, glimpses here and there uh, I thought looked cool. 
Yeah, and then, yeah, so Sam gets away and she sort of, like, quits her job and drives off into the sunset, basically. Although yeah. there is one scene that I, I've I glossed over that we really should go back and talk about, is when the, the guy that works at the pizza place, who's kind of into her and is trying to, like, get oh, to sure. him, uh, she, yeah. he's called over by Danica under the pretense of her wanting a hot pizza dude. Um, <laughs> and she does this ritual where she you know gives she gives him cocaine but it's like laced with something and she starts pulling it she starts throwing up his intestines and everything mm. and uh she's like looking through his innards which is going to tell that, that's how she finds them like finds the girls is because this like tells her because it's someone she knows and some magic reason this will tell her where where they are um this is what another one of these things where it's kind of gross but at the same time like you know, I saw City of the Living Dead, and I saw just <laughs> how ridiculous this can look, and it felt so sterile in comparison. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, you know, I don't want to harp on it too much, but it's just like, ah, yeah, it sure. feels kind of, it feels like okay, they're, they're doing their best, but it all, every, everything in it kind of feels like I've seen this all done better elsewhere. Yeah, unfortunately, um, yeah, like it, it doesn't necessarily make it like the specific scenes bad but then also it doesn't really kind of elevate it if you're you know thinking of like oh like yeah this is cool but i've, I've seen it done better before yeah um, um like i said i mean the best thing about the movie is the acting especially the lead i think she's very natural she doesn't come off as like this director video actress or anything like that um yeah. she carries the movie it's just a shame that it doesn't quite ever live up to because I, I remember when i first heard about this premise i thought oh a piece of delivery girl uh cults after horror comedy i was like oh this sounds like a lot of fun the title's great i mean the title's you know really yes. good <laughs> uh but it just i don't know it just it feels a little bit uh lukewarm kind of throughout for me sure so yeah uh, that's kind of yeah, disappointing but not only like the worst thing ever either by any means it's just an okay watch yeah, I mean, I, I liked it a little better, but uh, again, not gonna like fully disagree. Like, I, I think it's good, but uh, unfortunately, I, I do think you know see a little bit of the potential of where, like, oh, this could have been uh, like a lot better and, and maybe like a new kind of like little cult classic thing versus like, uh, oh, okay, this was good, but yeah, you know, maybe not something I'm like gonna super stick with you you know like uh, for a long time or anything um, yeah, i think there's a lot of these vod movies that we want to feel that way about and they end up being disappointing that said this is still much better than slice so you know give it that oh without a doubt yeah. compared to another <laughs> vod pizza <laughs> themed movie yeah <laughs> much better than slice uh still the second best uh you know story about a you know horror story about a pizza delivery uh driver this year but um was the first? still really good though Oh, well, that would be Goatman in the Midnight Delivery, of course. <laughs> oh, I thought it was about a movie. Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. Tim's comic book. Uh. Hey, don't don't think, uh, you know, I, I didn't notice that, uh, you know, <laughs> horror pizza delivery drivers are in. I've, Of course, I had this premise uh, much longer than <laughs> any of these people did. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> um, but no, it's, uh, yeah, it's still... Yeah, yeah. I guess I would have liked to uh, to maybe have seen some of those pizzas uh, at some point. Though <laughs> I feel like uh, I feel like never really got a good look of uh, what kind of pizza that we're dealing with. Um, and I was excited to see uh, her uh, her boss at, at the pizza place, who I believe uh, was the guy that was in uh, a movie <laughs> that we didn't review, uh, but that I liked, which was uh, the Last Puppet Master <laughs> movie. Uh, um, I will get. I mean, we have to do the whole franchise. We'll get there. <laughs> yeah, there was like ten of those damn things. Gee, I, I think it's more than that. <laughs> there's a, okay, there's at least ten. There's a, yeah, there, there's that's another one of those ones where it's like you know there's a lot, but you know I think you, you still get surprised when you're like, wait a minute, there's that 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 many. Uh, oh boy. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, I guess we need to rate the movie too. I think that's what's left for us to do. Yeah. What are you giving up? Uh, I think I, I'm going to give it a seven. Uh, I think it's good. Uh, unfortunately, uh, could have been better. Uh, but uh, also, too, I, I do think it is, um, you know, a b bit more comedy than horror. And, uh, you know, a lot of the comedy stuff did work for me. So, um, I don't know, maybe I'd be a little more disappointed if I was looking at it maybe more from a horror angle. Um, but uh, no, I, I was happy, but I wasn't blown away, unfortunately, like I was hoping to be. 
Did you get my number? Seven. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I, okay, I missed that. I missed that that, that small part of your uh, uh, your, your your rating there. Um, um, I I am going to go with a five point five. Um, I think um, cast are likable. I don't want to be too mean to it, but ultimately it left me just kind of feeling kind of like it, it felt like a lot like a Netflix movie where at the end of it I was like, eh, you know, it, it did its thing, but ultimately felt like it was just kind of like just skirting the line, skirting the line of what it actually wants to do as opposed to really, do, really, really doing it. Um, and yeah. budget's part of that problem, but I think. I don't want to just say that though in blanket because I feel like you know some directors can take the budget this probably had and focus it better into what they do what you achieve. So you know I don't want to, to just just blame it on that on its own. But oh yeah, and then we've we've seen stuff with like super low budgets that are you know amazing like some of the you know you you know maybe like some like I, I would probably even argue like a lot of our you know favorite movies we're working on with like you know not a lot of money um yeah. so it's uh yeah you know i i don't want to say that necessarily you know as a bad thing but um you know unfortunately there are certain movies where it shows a little bit more um than others uh and i, I like you said i think um Obviously, I don't know the finer techniques that go into <laughs> making a movie, but you know something about like you know so, like some low budget thing that was made in the '80s where it still looks like a movie versus how they do stuff now. I don't know if it's like a, a digital thing versus a film thing. I think that's um, part of it because I, I think film looks better, generally speaking. Without a doubt, yeah. I, I think it forces uh, the, the lighting to be a certain way, and it like I think a lot of this digital stuff now looks the same. Um, yeah. unless you have directors and cinematographers who are going out their way to make it look good uh, and that's kind of a problem part of you know and then if you don't have a style on top of that then you do end up looking like a TV show um, and I think yeah part, and part of it may just be that so many more people are getting into filmmaking because it's easier to get into because of all this digital technology that's oh, available sure. as a consumer uh, the yeah I don't know I mean, the, ent- the entry the, the, the bar for entry uh used to be so high that anyone who got to a certain point making movies like i don't know not, not that there weren't bad directors back in the day because they were but i, I don't know <laughs> like it's just uh, yeah like i feel like a low budget movie from like the 70s and the 80s uh tends to end up looking a lot better and have a lot more charm than a low budget movie from today uh yeah. and i don't know if that's just you know us being old men and like ah movies <laughs> look better in our day even though i wasn't alive during the period yeah. i'm talking about <laughs> um but you know as well as so 5.5 so a little bit lukewarm for me um not a bad time but um probably nothing i'm ever going to want to watch again or anything that i'm ever going to be like oh you have to watch the tiny panic it's you know it's fine um yeah. so there you go uh that is Titanic panic um that has been this episode of screams after midnight but yeah so we patreon you can support us that way you can support us other ways such as uh rating the podcast on your apple podcast app or wherever else you listen to it uh five stars helps us out a lot makes more people find the show and then you can also of course like subscribe let us know what you thought of the movie in the comments get us on twitter it screams midnight all these things are all good go do one or all of them please uh, so uh that is that has been us that has been screams after minute has been satanic panic hopefully you had fun we will see you next time uh, we're getting very close to october guys so brace yourself uh but keep watching scary movies and we will see you next time